Welcome to Rugby, I'm Alex Simmons, back once again for my journeys to Toronto. Amazing experience, but tonight we're looking back at the Super League Grand Final. We've got two fantastic guests in studio, teammates, but this week face off against each other. Matt English, England Knights, Michael Lawrence, Jamaica. Firstly, Michael, Bruno, as you're fondly known to the boys, are you looking forward to this weekend's big game? Yeah, I can't wait. Um, should be a great, great event um, at Heading Lane. I'm looking forward to getting my my first cap for Jamaica and, and pulling on the jersey and going up against Matt, it should be fun and a few other Giants boys. Mate, over 5,000 tickets sold already. A game that's really captured the imagination of the Rugby League fan base and hopefully we can get a few more there, a few more England fans as well because what we're going to be seeing is some of the next generation, at least three or four of your teammates this weekend, maybe yourself, will make that England squad in 2021. Yeah, that's the goal, mate. That's definitely the goal. I think we've gone for a young, a young group uh, that, like I said, are keen to get into that World Cup team. Looking at some of them players who have been picked, Morgan, Morgan Smithies is one that really sticks out for me because he's come onto the scene at Wigan and people are calling him the next to Lachlan. How good could he be? Yeah, potentially massive, mate. Yeah, I've played against him as, as a kid, coming up against him at academy level and yeah, he's a freak him. Very good player. Camp starts tomorrow, Bruno, and uh, the chat's been good with the boys and Jamaica's one of those nations because I've been involved for since March this year. And we know there's a massive 800,000 Jamaicans in the UK. There's a huge audience to potentially engage and we could actually be, uh, we could fill like a five, 10,000 state stadium with our own fans, which is quite exciting. Very exciting. Um, it's, it's important we put on a good show and obviously interact with our communities, obviously around West Yorkshire and um, Leeds and Huddersfield areas, Bradford, there's a massive West Indian community and um, we're hoping to call out to all those people and hopefully they can come on board maybe for the first taste of Rubber League and we can show them what Jamaica Rubber League are about and show them how entertaining, how good the sport can be and hopefully get that back in and build that fan base ready for the World Cup in two years time. Let's go back to last weekend, the big dance, Old Trafford, we were there and I thought <coughs> it were superbly put together by Rob Elston and his team, they did a great job last week at the Man of Steel and this week personally for me working in fan, fan park and fan zone just seeing how, how much more professional it was this year uh, Rob Porteous and the team there did a really good job uh, what did you think of the game that were you Matty what, what were your thoughts on Saints versus Salford were you a dreamer wanting Salford to win or were you, were you, you think the Saints deserved it this year I think Saints did enough this year I think they, they did deserve to win it uh, obviously Salford great that they got there Nobody expected them to beat Wigan, I don't think, in the semi-final and they got there and uh, they had a dig, I'm not going to lie, I thought Saints came out flying, didn't they? And they hung on in there, got the, got the try back and yeah, they were in it until the last, last bit of the game, really. Making some 40 metre drop goal, not messing about like Pat Richards back in the day. Uh, what were your thoughts uh, on, uh, on Salford this year? Because they were written off by everybody, me included. I, I never expected them to get anywhere near. I didn't think, I didn't think they'd go down. I, I always thought London might go down with, with what they spent, but I certainly didn't expect Salford to be so far up the table. Now, you've played against both teams this year, and what, what did you get from both teams? Um, regarding St. Helens, um, I think they deserved it. They've been yeah. outstanding all season, um, obviously. They've probably only, during the regular season, probably only really lost one game. Obviously, they rested. They played weaker sides against London twice yeah. and, and, pick, and picked up two losses there. So really throughout the whole year, they only lost one game. So they have been the best side in the competition all year. Salford, what they've managed to do is outstanding, really. Um, the, the players play really hard for each other. They're a tough team to beat. They defend really well. And then you chuck Jack, Jackson Hastings in there, Nile Wells, and they're dangerous. They're a very dangerous side. And I, I knew, um, apart from St. Helens, everybody else was in the mix. So it's been yeah. probably the so closest Super League competition of all time really and then Salford took their opportunities and, and they got there and then obviously on the night just unfortunate just to miss out. Unfortunately for you boys you weren't at the right end of the table this year. How stressful <laughs> were it going into that final game knowing you could go down? It's tough for me watching it obviously being injured you sat there thinking the boys have got to dig deep here otherwise we don't really want to be relying on other results but yeah it was no, nail biting stuff. Um, on your WhatsApp, you've got your band on and playing with RC13, Ronan Costello. Now, you played sadly in the game where Ronan yeah. lost his life. Tell us a bit about him as a, as a person, as a player, because he would have been like yeah. right up there. He had the potential, yeah. He'd have, been, he'd have been sat in our changing room right now if what happened didn't happen. Uh, as a bloke, he was a legend, yeah. We obviously went to college together, did the B Tech together, and yeah, what a guy he was. He was very quiet in his ways, but 
when he laughed, everyone laughed. And like, he was one of them type of bloke that was always there, always, he was a lad's lad. Loved to be around the lads. Um, and yeah, what, what a bloke he was. And sadly, a good friend lost his life that day. How, how are you all keeping his memory alive? Because obviously I've noticed you're doing that and the club, the community has been so affected and it's three years ago now, but we still hear his name, we still see yeah. events. It's, it's great to keep him going. And how, how are you keeping Ronan's name alive? 100%, I think every year there's always his festival, uh, which we all all buy into and always go down. Um, the boys really get on, on the back with that. and. The boys that have all been in that academy team that was there all keep his legacy going. We all catch up every now and again and it's weird that we always seem to have that bond. Everyone were there and who was in that team that day, kind of, we got through it together afterwards and I think we'll keep that forever, if I'm honest, mate. Mate, you, you've got some great young players and a player was signed today. I'm quite surprised, Ashton Golden half, fellow Jamaican signing. So I think we're up to like five or six Jamaicans now at this field. Yeah. But Ashton Golding, quite a surprising <laughs> signing given the fact that Daniel McIntosh played so well at fullback last year. Were you surprised to hear when Ashton's name was thrown up? Uh, no, um, I've only recently just found out that he'd been signed and obviously he adds quality to the squad. Um, he's a great experienced fullback and um, I've seen him play a lot. I saw him play for Ferriston um, back in the day in the playoffs and he did a great job. And um, it'll be some comp competition and we've got. Um, depth of outside backs at our club, young, 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 good outside backs, and he'll he'll add to that, and there'll be more competition for places come come round one next year. It's time now to go over to Henley Stadium because one of the legends of the international game, Paul Gallen, who's lifted a World Cup himself, went down there for a dinner hosted by JJB, and we cheekily nipped in there and got his age partnership, five toughest. I've been really nervous because I'm about to interview a rugby league icon here at Edinburgh Emerald Stadium. He's come over from Australia and this guy is a superstar. The word legend gets bandied about. This fella goes right above that. He's a state of origin hero and a long time 19 year captain of the Cronulla Sharks. It is of course Paul Gallen. Gals, how are you Paul? Hi mate, good to see you. I'm good, thank you. I'm really excited about tonight mate. I think I've learnt that much about Cronulla. It's coming out <laughs> of my ears. The Shire as it's known. And I always thought there was only one Shire, Yorkshire, but it isn't. There's the, the one in uh, Sydney as well. Mate, it's great to have you. I'm looking forward to talking to you, but we do a feature on Rugby M called Hard as Nails. And it talks about the five toughest players that you've ever played against. Now you're one of the most industrious, hardworking grafters I've ever seen play the game of rugby league, but I'm really interested in five players that you've come up against. Who would be the toughest? Yeah, look, tough, tough to me is, uh, comes in different ways. Yeah. Um, there's obviously the big tough guys that come through the middle, and to me, there's halves and hookers. I think they're really tough too. So my five toughest would be Shane Webke. I caught Shane right. Webke at the back end of his career. Yeah, yeah. He was like hitting a brick wall. Just couldn't <laughs> stop him. He was an absolute machine. Kept going all day. Um, next one will be Petro Sivnasiva. Yep. You probably would have played against Petro yourself. Might have done once, maybe once or twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was still playing for Australia up until 2011-12. So, um, look, he was just hard as nails. Had a big work rate, just really, really tough and a really, really genuinely good guy. But he was certainly very, very tough. Um, then there was, a, there was a Pommy, Adrian Morley. Wow. Adrian Morley was the probably the best front row in the world, I thought, when I was starting my career at Cronulla in the early 2000s. Yep. He had that genuine intimidation factor about him. You just didn't know what he was going to do. He obviously got suspended a fair bit, but that, that's what made him scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'd either tackle you, the yeah. normal tackle, hit you around the waist and cut you in half, or he'd give you a stiff forearm straight to the head. You just didn't know what was going to ha happen with him, and he just had a genuine intimidation factor. I, I thought he was the best fighter in the world at one stage. Right. He, he was that good. Yeah, that's a great compliment. In fact, our feature that we did with Adrian Moore, I think it's got about 200,000. I didn't know there was that many people watching rugby league, and it does personify who Adrian Morley was not it? Just, just to touch on that, we've had a lot of forwards go over there from England and do quite well as well. Yeah. You know, the lads over there now, Bateman, James Graham, the Burgess brothers, Gareth Ellis, who was a lad who played with yeah, for many he, years. He was a great player, Gareth Ellis, yeah. Good boys. Yeah, Why do you yeah. think the English boys do so well over there? I, I think I think that the forwards do really, really well. We've seen some backs go over and look, I think Gareth Widdop's probably been the best back to go over right. and, and really succeed. But we've seen Tompkins go over, yeah, um, yeah. Didn't, didn't quite um, catch on to it. But I think the forwards look, I'll give the Poms a bit of a rap, he's a tough, I'll give you that, he's a tough and to be a forward in the NRL you've got to be tough and that, yeah. that's why I think these uh, these guys come over there and do so well, particularly Bateman at the moment, he's going well, James Graham has been a, he's been a great player there for a number of years, um, Burgess boys obviously they're great as well so yeah I think that their, their toughness shines in Australia. 
for sure. And who's would be uh, number two then? Yeah, look, the last the last couple would be Cameron Smith. Cameron Smith's the best player I've ever played with or against. He's just an absolute competitor. Competes on everything, uh, every play right throughout the game. Plays for 80 minutes. Uh, he's he's tough as nails. There's, there's a player over here called James Robin. Uh, whilst I never try and compare Super League and NRL, um, those attributes that you're talking about there, where they never seem to get tired as well, yep. because that that brings about a certain toughness to be able to play for 80 minutes at that intensity and level and, and get targeted. You get targeted in the yeah. middle as a hooker. I, I spoke about James Roby last night, Albert Whitehaven. And I said right. he's a player I wish had to come to the NRL. Right. I thought he could have made it in the NRL. He was a really really good player, and he was he was certainly top of the tip sheet when we played against England. Um, you know, back in the day when I was playing against him, but he, he was a great player. Never came over to Australia, which you know, would have been interesting if he come over. Uh, the last player I'll say would look, it's, it's a toss flip of the coin between uh, Billy Slater and Jonathan Thurston, but right. I'm just going to edge Jonathan Thurston in front. Just, just purely competes on absolutely everything. Didn't have the blistering speed and I suppose the natural talent that someone like Billy Slater had, but just worked so hard on his game and um, you know, for a smaller guy was as tough as nails, I thought. Well, mate, you're one of the toughest characters as well. I've only played against you once or twice, I think, in the Nationals around 2011 time. But I just want to want to ask you the question about the story. I'm always interested in why people are tough. Some people just can't be coached or trained into that mentality. And I wanted to ask you about when you was a kid, the story when you had appendicitis, I think <laughs> it was, and you played a week later. We're always talking about pros playing when they're injured. Just listen to this story. Yeah, so... Uh, I can't remember if it was a Mother's Day or a Father's Day, but I remember there was a party going in my house. And my mum and dad all had heaps of people over partying and drinking and carrying on. And I went out and said, something's wrong with me, I'm really, really sick. And obviously they have a good night. They just ushered me back to bed, <laughs> go back to bed. <laughs> anyway, my appendix burst overnight. Wow. So the wow. next morning um, I got up and said, that something's like wrong. Uh, they rushed me to hospital, uh, emergency surgery, had my appendix out. Spent a week in hospital, um, got out you know, after seven days, and I think it's a bit easier these days, but back then, it was a long time ago, seven days in hospital. Got out, and it was like on a Monday or a Tuesday, and the, the, the following Sunday, we're playing footy. And I thought I was okay to play. I'm like, I'm playing footy this week. And mum's like, you are not playing footy. There's no way you're playing footy. And I'm like, I'm playing footy. And I said, yeah. I said Dad, I'm playing footy. I love, I loved it. So I was only about eight or nine. Plus. And um, I said, I'm playing. He goes, okay. So we went and got, he was a plumber. He went and got, I had four younger brothers and sisters, some of them were still in nappies. So we, we tied a nappy up, put it to me and duct taped it around my waist and I went to the field <laughs> <Yeah>. and played. <laughs> That's unbelievable, what a dad, what a dad as well. Good on you, Paul, it's been absolute pleasure. Really appreciate it, mate. Paul Gallen, absolute legend there. Have you ever played against Paul Gallen? No. No, no. I missed out. Yeah, no, I got the chance. He looks play. angry, doesn't he? He does yeah. look like an angry man. He's been a tough, great, he? great player for a long time, hasn't he? But yeah, he does look very angry. I know Bo Ryan pretty well, and last time I went out with Bo, I said, is it, is it, you know, did you actually get stuck into him and wind him up like this? He said, mate, he punched me on Mad Monday once because he just can't <laughs> take, he couldn't take Bo's banter and the way he is. He says he's just the angriest man alive. But he, he did so much in the game. But what players inspired you when you when you were coming through as as young players? Uh, for me, to be fair, it's funny. Um, Jason, obviously, he, yeah. he was my biggest idol oh, growing up. Funny. Yeah, and pretty much it's not. <laughs> so uh, so when, I know that's that's what I mean. I know when you told me he was on board, I was like, I'm in. <laughs> no, so but yeah, when I growing up, obviously, I started off playing centre wing. So yeah. yeah, he was one of the players I looked up to. Um, as a kid, when when he was playing for Wigan before he transferred over, those to legs Union. have gone now, aren't they? Yeah. No centre wing. <laughs> <anymore. laughs> Just keep moving closer to the middle. Eh? <laughs> like you, mate. Uh, the likes Peacock, Burgess, yeah. Graham, just big front rowers that carried hard and did all the tough stuff. To look at Graham, think I'm like you. I'm blonde. <laughs> just a little bit better looking. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding. There you say that to his face. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we should do. Next time he's on Mad Monday, gets really drunk, passes out, dies there. Bro. <laughs> you <laughs> ruined it. I don't know. Oh, oh, uh, Leon Price and Lee Gilmore almost did it to James Graham on Mad Monday. Oh, <laughs> he fell wow. asleep, passed out. Not his eyebrows back in his head. Like, he woke brilliant. up and tried to run him over. <laughs> the, the stories on Rugby on YouTube, watch it. And also, a big thanks to all you subscribers. 10,000 people subscribed to Rugby M on YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash Rugby MTV. Uh, but yeah, it's well worth uh, well worth checking that out. Talk to me about Paul Schoolfort because he's your is he your team manager or yeah. assistant coach? What yeah, is yeah, he? yeah, Scully. Yeah, he's getting involved with the coaching. Yeah, he's yeah. good. Yeah, really nice guy. 
you got Jamie Jones in there as well, media we manager. Getting a camera in your face everywhere you go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Uh, Sir Kev's always down. Yeah. Poking round, yeah. And then Big Baloo, just at the helm, taking yeah. control of the boys. What's it been like to be involved with, with the Knights? And, and <clears throat> do you really see it as that stepping stone? Because a lot of players have made that process through yeah. uh, to the first team. Yeah, definitely. All the meetings we've had over the over the year really uh, Wayne Bennett came to one of them and spoke in front of us oh, that, like? that was class it yeah. made us actually feel involved obviously all the England boys were there as well and it just felt like we were all in one room and yeah. actually could believe in what they were all saying um, and yeah just just like that really um, and they keep giving us a stat and I think it's like 39 players that have played in the in the England Knights have gone on to play and play in the first team so we're believing in it and we're trying yeah. to get there Outstanding! It's all stats this weekend, but now it's time to catch up with Paul Schoolfort because he's obviously a legend of the game. He's won it all, but he looks back. He gives us his grand final memories. Check this out. The atmosphere in, in camp in 2002 ahead of the grand grand final was was pretty good. Um, you know, we'd we'd obviously won it two out of the, the, the three previous years. Uh, 99, 2000. We knew we had a, an outstanding team, uh, but also knew we were up against a, a real good, uh, a good, good Bradford side. Did them winning the Man of Steel have an effect on, on, on me in the grand final? Uh, I don't think so. Um, you know, obviously it was, it was the second year running that I'd, I'd won it. Uh, personal accolades are, are nice, but you know, it, it, obviously it doesn't do your, your confidence any uh, any harm going into the, the grand final. The number of job goal attempts in the in the game, I think from from both ends. Uh, obviously, it was it was that tight a game, and it you know it, eventually it come down to a to a win with a with a drop goal off uh, off Sean Long. I think I had a I had a pop. I think Tommy Martin had a pop. Um, obviously, Paul Deacon from from Bradford. Um, you know, yeah, you expect that in, in them games, and uh, you know it was always going to be a, a tight game. As we knew that, you know, from, from previous games against Bradford, uh, that it could come down to a, to a drop goal. And you know, so we had a we had a few uh, few people who could who could kick them as well, and I did a lot of them uh, in in that season. Um, so I think I, I was probably a bit of a foil uh, on the on the right hand side, and, and the ball went to to, to Longy, and he, he obviously. He, uh, you know, he's, he's kicked some, he's kicked some big drop goals in his in his time, and, and certainly that was one of them. And then, obviously, from the uh, from the from the kickoff after uh, after Longy's uh, Longy's drop goal was the uh, the infamous uh, Chris Joint. I'm not going to say vulture tackle. I'm going to say slip. He slipped. I've had a good crack with the with the lads, the likes of uh, of Gilly and Baloo and all that after uh, you know after the, the the game, you know, since and you know we, they always talk about the the vulture tackle. They should have had a penalty and. You know, Deeks sort have of obviously had a, a good chance of, of winning the game, but um, you know, he slipped. He got back up. Play on. Yeah, it's, it's since been mentioned as, as probably one of the one of the, if not the best uh, grand final uh, 2002. It, I think it was just the, the rivalry between the teams. I think the the amount of quality players as well on show from from both sides. Um, obviously, you know, made made it what it was, and and it was always going to be a tight game between two two good sides, and you know, eventually come down to the to a last minute drop goal. So. I can I can see why it'd be regarded as one of the uh, one of the great grand finals. The squads have been announced. Um, obviously, England Knights boys, 19-man squad now. Some young guns in there. Harry Smith. Talks about Harry Smith. Players people don't might really know who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the young half. Yeah, yeah great talent. Um, saw him play against the schoolboys when they came over here, and he ran the show. To be honest, he's got a great kicking game. And yeah, looking forward to meeting him. And then Harry Newman as well, the Leeds favourite. It's three or four Leeds boys in and around the team. He's explosive. Yeah, he's a, he's a talent, isn't he, Newman? Um, he's kind of come out of nowhere in a way. Uh, but yeah, he's a really good bloke. Got to know him pretty well over the last couple of weeks. And yeah, he's got some skills. Nine squad, interesting one. Reese Lynn in, uh, Sam Tompkins in, Blake Austin in both squads, Jermaine McGilvery in both squads. How's Jermaine feeling? What's the what's he been saying on WhatsApp? No, he's looking forward to it, to be fair. Yeah, he loves it. Um, he had a real good time, obviously, last time when they were out for the World Cup. Yeah. He did really well. Um, and I think, obviously, all the Australian public and everybody um, but it really stood up and he really, he really put on a big, good, great display on the big stage, didn't he? So he's really excited this time to go down again and hopefully do the same again. It's his testimonial year, but were you surprised after the World Cup they stayed up this field? Because everyone were in for him. Yeah. That could have been a chance to get a big move to NRL or go to 
what's perceived to be a bigger club in England, a Wigan or somebody like that? Yeah, um, yeah, he did. He pretty much had, he pretty much had his pick. But um, no, the club did right by him, um, and obviously um, he signed it, signed a long-term deal at Huddersfield. Mate, looking at the Great Britain squad because that's the squad that everyone really wants to be in. Let's be fair. Liam Watts gets in the nine squad, doesn't get in Great Britain squad. Morgan Knowles obviously pulls out for injury. We used to, we used to first let's talk about Liam Watts because he was on the show a couple of weeks ago. Desperate to play for Great Britain. He's surprised he's not in the squad. He both played against him this year. Yeah. I think he's probably been best prop in Super League. He was in the dream team for that reason. How has he missed out on this squad? He's a, he's a great player. Um, obviously, any time you play against Cass, you know, he's pivotal to what they do. And normally when he plays well, Cass will play well. Um, but yeah, um, it's a bit of a puzzle, Ron, really. I suppose only, only Wayne knows that, that question, really. I know he likes to stay stay loyal to the teams that he's picked over the past. and. Normally, if you're playing at a good level and you've you've proved yourself when you're playing for England, um, in in all mistakes by you. Well, it looks like Joe Philbin's probably just got the nod over him. Yeah. Why Joe Philbin over Liam Watts? Give us, give us a give us a reason. Or would you pick Watts over Philbin? What it's up to you, mate. You know, asking you. <laughs> I'd, a I'd have picked Watts, but having known Philbs uh, over the last couple of weeks in the England night setup, he, he's a good kid and he, he's professionalism in. He's at 100% everything he does. He carries, he'd run through a brick wall if you asked him to. Uh, but yeah, I'm a little bit puzzled on that one. My only maybe concern is what's he giving away penalties. Yeah. And he hates, he hates that, doesn't he, Wayne Bennett? That's yeah. what we've all been heard about him. That's my only thing why he might have picked Philbin. Well, let's have a look at the squad. So, James Graham, your dad, captain. <laughs> um, Blake Austin, John Bateman, Tom Burgess, Daryl Clark, Jake Connor, Lachlan Coot. Oli Gilda, Zach Hardacre, interesting one. Zach, obviously not making nines, but getting back into the Great Britain squad. Jackson Hastings, uh, Ryan Hall, after not playing much this year, is, is in the squad. Chris Hill, Josh Hodgson, Jack Hughes, Johnny, Josh Jones, Johnny Lomax, Jermaine McGilvery, Joe Philbin, Luke Thompson, who were unreal in the grand final. Jake Truman, Alex Wormsley, Elliot Whitehead, Gareth Widdup, George Williams. Right, first thing, Bruno. Jackson Hastings, Blake Austin. Do you have an issue with Australians playing for Great Britain? Um, yeah, no. I used to think I used to have a little bit of issue. I used to think, oh, we should just we've got enough talent over here. We should just have the best um, English-born players playing. But obviously now that I'm, I'm, I'm part of the Jamaica squad, yeah, I kind of look at it a different way yeah. because we're all in that position that Jackson Hastings and Blake Austin yeah. are in. Yeah. Our grandparents, our parents, they were the ones that were born on the island um, that were actually born in Jamaica, and, and we're playing off that. At that heritage so they're only in the same position as us so if we can do it for Jamaica why can't they do it for England great answer what do you reckon my I'm on the I'm on the Other on side. the edge yeah I'm a <laughs> little bit you should play for who you're born and like and where you're from and I don't I don't get why Australians yeah we want to go over there and compete but I'd like to see English boys go over that might not be as good and have a dig for the for the boys I like it mate it's great this is what it's all about they had a conversation but what do you think Check us out on social media at RugbyM on the Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and give us your thoughts. It's all about you guys, the fans. Please don't forget this weekend, England Knights versus Jamaica at Headley Stadium. Calling all you Jamaicans, we need you. Come down and support the boys. All you England fans, come down and support your future heroes. Uh, tickets, just 10 quid for adults. Get yourself down, kids, three quid. It's it's a bargain, isn't it? And it's it's open for everyone. We want to see a big crowd there, don't we, Bruno? Yeah, definitely. Create a big atmosphere and hopefully we'll put on a good show. Is all the field fans coming to support you? Hopefully so, yeah. If, if selected, I think Carl fill the stadium just family alone. Oh yeah, have you got yeah, a few? Yeah. It's time now for your chance to win courtesy of Bachelor's Mushy Peas. And what a prize, a signed Great Britain shirt. Head of the series, we went into Huddersfield and filmed one of the players who was in both squads, the Nines and the Great Britain squad. So it's not difficult to guess who it is. Have a look at this video, go to rugbyam.co.uk and enter for your chance to win the shirt. We'll see you back here for part two. More on Rugby M on Free Sports. Keep it locked.
Welcome back, part two here on Rugby. I'm joined in the studio by Jamaica's Michael Lawrence and England Knights, Matt English. Looking forward to the big game this weekend at Enley Stadium. Boys, let's talk about the women's grand final because Adam Cuthbertson led his girls to a great double. The women's game's growing rapidly. The girls are down uh, for the nines with England. It's going to be great. But the Leeds team have got this knack of winning. And it's, it's almost like inbred into the club's DNA. Whenever they get to that grand final, that Challenge Cup, they just seem to get over the line. And the girls did it this weekend. Castleford being far and away the most consistent team, yet they beat them in the Challenge Cup final and went and beat them even more convincingly this weekend, Matty. It's just turning up in the big games, isn't it? They're finding a way to win in a game that it's up to anyone who, who shows up on the game. And yeah, it's all the game. Um, and yeah, I thought Leeds deserved to win it. And Matty, the game broadcast on Sky, that's a huge step in the right direction. Yeah, massive, massive for the women's game. And uh, rightly, rightly so. And hopefully in years to come, there'll be weekly, weekly games for everyone to watch. Yeah, hopefully the girls' game will continue to grow. I'm sure it will with the support of Betfred. But one man who knows all about winning grand finals is Jamie Jones Buchanan, a partner in crime who's won eight grand final rings for Leeds over a 20-year career. And he takes us around Old Trafford behind the scenes and gives us some of his best memories. Check this out. I once got quoted as saying that winning and losing is digital. It's like up or down, left, right, success, failure, black and white. It's as simple as that. You still get information from digital information. You still learn something from a win and you learn even more from a loss. But if you come into Old Trafford, you either come to write your name in history or you don't. This is the player entrance and now it's business time. You've had all your preparations done, the week's gone fantastic. You've had your stay at the Midland Hotel in Manchester. You pull up at the bus and it's full of fans. Some of them are the rare fans all giving you a lot of stick and a lot of booze. The others are the Leeds fans wishing you all the very best. This is where it starts. Welcome to the changing rooms at Old Trafford, being a Leeds lad, I never thought I'd say that, but it's got so many fond memories, some of the best memories of my sporting life, if I'm honest. And we're in the old away changing rooms, it's actually a kit room now, I'm blown away, I've just been walking down the tunnel looking for it, and it just says, kit room, how on earth do you change a changing room into a kit room? Well, this is it, but I always used to sit round here in this corner, and it's funny how in sport, whether you go to Warrington, Hull, Wigan, Edinley, you always seem to gyrate, navigate to the same place every time. It was quite fascinating. And this is my home spot. Got loads of memories of photographs in this corner in particular with legends like Danny Baderius. I've seen that quite recently. And Rob Burrow, Ryan Bailey, Jamie Peacock, all the forwards used to obviously congregate around this side. Lots of fun, lots of anxiety, lots of champagne sprayed around after and lots of singing, which I was fortunate to lead most of the time as well and sing. And you're always quite nervous coming into a grand final because you're always thinking, you know, the last week is just an accumulation of the whole season. And what you need to do is package that up and put it together into the best version, the best 80 minutes that you're gonna have that year and go take it out of the pitch and your mind's always concentrated on that. Kevin and speaking and when it was ready to kick the door down, that's when Jamie Peacock really come to the forefront. But there was one really weird story and memory that stands out to my left. The majority of the time, the memories are to my right here with the lads having photographs with the trophy. But I remember once Ian Kirk was over in that corner and uh, he had these pair of boots. And I'm not kidding, the toes of his feet were coming out of the end of these boots. And he's got like some black insulation tape around one. And I think he had some red around others. And Brian McDermott was just walking around very uh, military-like, and uh, he looked down and he says, well, I don't think they're suitable, do you? And carried on walking. I remember thinking, that's a little bit awkward. It's a weird memory of all the grand finals I've won, thinking that Ian Kirk were playing in a, in a set of boots where his toes are pointing out at the end. 
There was one other memory as well, when I had this overwhelming sense of anxiety that came over me, and I don't know why it wasn't even my first grand final, I think it was 2009, and it may have been the fact that we were just about to go out for our third grand final in a row, and if we won it, obviously, it means we win three in a row, which would be extremely special. I don't think it's been done since. Uh, there's been a couple of braces in the history of Super League, but this anxiety took me into the toilet around their little cubicle and I just only person I can think of my comfort blanket my foundation and soulmate is my wife Emma and I text my wife and I said something like will you still love me if we lose uh, it was just a big occasion when I started thinking to myself that I'm just a Bramley kid you know from Stanningley played at Stanningley and uh, I'm gonna go out there and play in this massive stadium this massive iconic stadium against uh, an unbelievable side in St. Helens that, to be fair to them, used to pagger us during weekly rounds. And this excitement just overcome me. I was overwhelmed. One of the scariest moments, or weirdest moments, was I think I clashed heads with James Graham in a tackle. And the sensation of blood pouring down, it must have hit a vein because the blood was like hot water. It was really weird. I remember it being really warm, but I'm thinking, it can't be blood, there's that much of it. And it covered my arm in heat, like really warm. It felt like flowing, gushing warm water. And it must have been hot because I was running around and the temperature must have been through the roof as far as body temperatures go. And I'm obviously sweating, but the physio come running on, he just strapped it right up. And I don't know if James Graham thought that I was a weak link because he ran straight back at me, but I was ready to go. It's a grand final and it don't matter if you've got a bit of a cut. But I've been fortunate in most finals to come through pretty much unscathed other than my lungs fall into pieces. I'm sat right next to my final shirt, the one that we won against Cass. Bearing in mind Cass have beat us that year, 66-10, over at their place, at the jungle, at Weldon Road, down lane. And for all intents and purposes, I'm not sure anybody gives us a chance to win because they were so good that year, they were phenomenal. But for whatever reason, when it comes to grand final week and the rain starts coming down, you get the dew on the grass, the low sunshine, on the morning and the temperature just starts to drop. For whatever reason, the Leeds Rhinos boys had this congruence, this ability to gel together and just walk out there and give whatever gift you had for the best of the team. Unfortunately, this will remain my final grand final winning shirt. I've got my first ever grand final winning ring in 2004. These two bookends of an amazing journey and these have created some amazing experiences that I hope to pass on to the next generation with the hope of entertaining, inspiring or educating. Wow, it's a completely different changing room to what I remember. And there it is, my shirt. The only shirt I actually lost a grand final in. Can you believe, for the first seven years of my career, the couldn't fit Jones Buchanan on the back of the shirt. And I even remember one season when they had Jones on the home shirt and Buchanan on the away shirt. <laughs> These changing rooms, however, have given me mixed feelings because it's the changing room that I lost my only grand final in 2005 to Bradford Bulls. I have actually won out of these changing rooms as well, which is quite interesting and obviously bring about some good memories. But the big one for me, the mixed, is the 2015 grand final, the treble, the most important grand final in the club's 120 year history. A big one as well, a really hard fought contest against the Wigan Warriors. What was crazy is that I'd played in all 19 finals, Grand Finals, Challenge Cup, World Club Challenges, up to that 2015 Grand Final, and I missed out to injury. It was a tough time, but actually, one of the most memorable times in my career, not least when I went up to lift the Challenge Cup with Kevin Timfield in my suit. And I had this real privileged position 
as a Leeds fan, a Leeds Rhino supporter from being seven, eight years old, to come and see my hometown club in a momentous time in its history and go on and win the grand final and the treble. And I watched it from right over in that corner, the best position in the world as a, as a Leeds fan rather than being a Leeds player. And I even remember actually being sat on the bench for most of the game and I thought rather than run out and jump on people's backs like most players do, I just wanted to stand on the bench and open my eyes to use camera terminology to the widest aperture and capture every piece of light that was coming out of that stadium because that was a truly historic moment. So these changing rooms have got mixed memories for me. We've got one win, I think, one loss for sure and an observed grand final treble. Here it is, here's the big grand final walk. You, uh, you'll have a bit of a rerun anyway, like you do when you're playing the grand final, you've got to go warm up and just get that experience walking on with your boots. But there's not like going out to the tunnel to line up to play and you see the other team. These changing rooms right here are the ones that I walked out of more often than not and lined up on the inside, but I have won one from the home changing rooms. Lost one as well, as I've mentioned. And uh, here we are, walking into the tunnel, and you can always feel the heat of the pyrotechnics as well. And it's scary because you can hear the noise. Unlike at Wembley, it's a little bit further away. The noise is right on top of you at Old Trafford. And you're just looking round at the opposition and thinking, right, I need to get on top of you pretty quick. Let's get that ball kicked off because we need to make some contact and we need to get rid of those nerves. Wow. In 2011, probably my greatest year, I was in some great form and I'd really matured as a professional. And about level here, I saw the greatest try I've ever seen in a grand final. It's really interesting because Rob Burrow took off at a dummy half and I was screaming because I wanted the ball, give me it here, Rob, give me it here. And the best picture I've ever seen of a glide cam following Rob Burrow score this try, weaving in and out, ducking under, I think it was Paul Wellens, and scoring just at left at post. Wow, what a try. What an outstanding memory. Relentless game that could take a 79 minute before we get a winner. Oh, he's, he's stuck under the furrow! And he's outstripped Wellens! It's a brilliant Burrow try! A fantastic Rob Burrow try! So there's a few of my grand final stories. We're here, it's grand final day now. St. Helens versus Salford. Um, it's a massive game, I'm really looking forward to it. And I can't wait to see the Salford fans, their debut at Old Trafford. We're about an hour from kickoff. It was about the same time I locked myself in that cubicle in about 2009, really nervous about coming out and playing on this massive occasion. And a bit like Harry Potter, I wanted to flush myself down the toilet, but there was no escape. The only escape was to walk down that tunnel there and enter the arena, the Coliseum, the grand final. That's as good as it gets. It's a great day for players, but it's also a great day for the fans as well. And we're going to catch up with Wagger running around, don't know where he is. I know he's having fun. Let's go find out where he is. <laughs> Taurus, it's game day. There is no bigger day than the grand final, the big dance at Old Trafford between Salford and St. Helens. It's going to be awesome. The league leaders against the underdogs. Come on, let's go chat to some fans. Salford against St. Salford, St. I see the Salford Reds are rising! I see the Reds! I see! Oh, it's Duncan! Oh, where the Saints? Go watch it in! Oh, where the Saints? Go watch it in! I wanna be in the number! Oh, where the Saints? Go watch it in! Oh, I'm teaming! Look at that! 
I told you I used to play a game. I told you I was always in fancy dress and doing daft stuff on TV. Can I interview this little baby? Yeah. Hey! Salford! Hi, Salford! 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 Look at that. I'm impressed at the Salford chant, but look, zoom in. She's not. Not even walk up. Yeah, Salford Red old. Devil, first five game, week old. First game. Great. How good is it to be at Old Trafford? Your club, Salford, are finally here. Woo! Bring on the Salford! <laughs> Look at that, it'd be lit, isn't it? Four <laughs> generations. Who will get the man of the match, Davy Sunderland, today? Jackson's going to be favourite, but our forwards have been absolutely awesome. Dudson, Mossip, could be any of them. What would you say to all these fans now, because apparently there's 10,000 plus Salford fans, they need season tickets next year. Next year. And next Even year! We'll <laughs> find next year. Game. If we were all here this year, we'd be able to afford to keep Jacko, so come back! <laughs> Definitely. I should be a neutral, but I've gone as a devil. <laughs> Some St. Helens fans aren't quite happy with me today, I but know, like... can Saints do it? Can they win yes, the grand yes. final? Definitely we can win the grand final, definitely, can't we? Yes. Yes. Who do you reckon will perform today and get the Harris Sunderland, that St. Helens team? I think possibly Kevin Nagama. Yeah, what a 30 appearances, 20 tries. <laughs> Right, in the dream team, what a guy. Yes, his favourite player, isn't it, Drake? Who's your favourite player? Raven Grace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, devil of a bro. Oh, devil of a bro, I like it. Salford, 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 yes! Game day. Salford fans are going mental. I'm the cheeky devil, and he's the red. He's this the is the cheeky devil, I'm the on, red Dennis. devil. Come, Come on, Dennis! Come on, Patrick! Come on, Patrick, Dennis! Look in! Look in! Tonight! If we win! Tonight, Salford win. Wagatonis is the, the dog of Patrick for Lockheed. Come on, Salford! 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 Boys, we're in the rooftop bar. Look at this. Full of Salford fans that put it on. How good is this experience? Could you believe Salford in the grand final? Never. Absolutely never, mate. Never, ever, ever, ever in my lifetime. Been supporting them since 1985. This is beyond our wildest dreams. Free it for us, Wagger, today. Absolute free it. If the Saints be us, so what? We don't care. We're just loving being here, mate. I just believe you've got the momentum, though. Going into this game, you've got the momentum. I just think you... We, I, I've got a feeling today we're going to win. Definitely going to win. Jackson Hastings, right? Entertainer of the year. Man of Steel. Yes. Performance-wise, 36 try assists. His stats are unbelievable. I could go on about that guy. His meters. He could create, with that player in your team, anything is possible. Oh, well and truly. Man of the match today. Man of the match. Not, not just Hastings, though. Josh Jones, Gil Dudson, oh. Flanagan. You've got players who have played in grand finals. Team spirit. Absolute team spirit. A togetherness that Watson has created with players that... You could say that uh, uh, kind of. I understand the championship argument, but they've, they've massively excelled under Watson, and he has created a team spirit that can't be underestimated. Fasini, what a guy! <laughs> Salford, massive. Can you believe Salford? The club we played for I'm are in the grand final. Absolutely, it's a wildest dream, like you know, they will come to this and whatever, like you know, it's just. So awesome. How good is club is Salford? The fans, the supporters are brilliant, aren't they? You, you can never take any away from the fans. They're the ones that make the club. Yeah. And that's players do. as well. Oh, former players. It's, like, I've just been walking around fast and the guy, they never forget you. You put that Salford shirt on, absolutely. you're playing for that shirt and they love it, don't they? That's right, yeah. Yeah. They are the probably the best, best, fa best yeah, fans ever. Best right. fans ever. Atmosphere around the stadium is absolutely electric from both sets of fans. Let's go in the stadium. It's going to be an awesome grand final.
Johnny Lomax, how special with that? You've got, you've got the next generation. Look at this. This is what rugby league's about. Memories, memories, isn't it? How yeah. good will that win? Oh, definitely. You know, kind of. You know, for myself, I missed 2014, and yeah. it was a hard road back. I went through a bit of some pretty dark times, expletive times, and you know, I don't want to swear on camera, you see. So, you know, to do it in front of your family, your main thing, and the little fella here, you know, it, it's. It's, yeah, it's a great experience, a great day. 12 6 half time, though. It was tough, tough in car that first half. Yeah, definitely. I think we always knew it was going to be. I think for some reason people had said some derogatory things regarding Salford in the, in the week and, and throughout the year. If you look at the, the team, the litter with grand final experience and internationals, and for some reason we, people started writing us off as well through the week. So, you know, sports full of romance in it. That's, what, that's why everyone loves it. And there's been two romantic tales going on, and thankfully. This romantic tale won it today. A drop kick as well. What about that? Mate, where did that come from? <laughs> I don't know where that. I just found myself in middle there, about 80 yards right or somewhere, wasn't it? <laughs> Easy oh. 80 yards. Oh, mate, it's special, isn't it? Special How good is this feeling? Oh, it doesn't just get better, does it? You take anything away from me. This, mate, it's just special rugby league. It's a, it is the greatest game. I don't care what you say. It's that song there, playing the fans, is unreal, mate. Alex Wormsley, how good a feeling with that? I saw you at the end of the game. You must, you must have done a lap straight to the Sage fans. How good were the fans today? Unbelievable. They've been outstanding all year. Um, listen, what, what an unbelievable club we have. Um, the town has been awesome. We've had such a great year. No one wanted to speak about us this week. It was all about the Salford story, and fair enough, it's a great story. But we finished six points clear. We deserve this. We've been outstanding, and I think we've got us just, you know, just rewards for a tough few years yeah, of, of hard work. And we've, we've seen the results tonight, and yeah, it means a lot. It's the second one I've won, but considering where we've been these last four years, five years, it means so much. It is. It's uh, listen. I've, I've had some highs in my career, but this is a pinnacle. How good will Luke Thompson? Harrison Lowe. He's the best what? in the world. What? The best in the world. As good as you? Better than me. <laughs> what a grand final. What a win for St. Helens. I'm so happy for Alex Wormsley, Lou McCarthy, all the boys who've spotted the show for so many years. Right, to finish the show, we need you to sign the desk. But before that, I want you both to give to your own audiences, Jamaica and England, a little 30 seconder to camera and tell the fans why they need to come this Sunday, Edinburgh, 3 pm. Um, just to all the Caribbean community, um, I think you all just get on board, um, come down, support the boys as we begin this journey towards the World Cup. Um, we're going to put on a good show. And yeah, definitely come get on board and, and join, the, join the journey towards 2021. Outstanding. Can you beat that? Yeah, to all the England fans out there, make sure you get down to Headley, support the boys, see the next generation of young talent coming through and get to see this face. <laughs> 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 oh, that'll do. That was awesome. The full English, give it, give it some. Uh, in all seriousness, guys, it's a, it's a huge game, and we really hope that people, all the rugby league community, all the rugby league family, can come down, see this face, but also just get behind the game. It's it's a bargain for anyone to come experience it on a game day. We've got some steel pans down there. We've got some carnival dancers. We've got. The uh, guys that host the carnival on the pitch side, it's going to be something different, Edley Stadium, plenty of uh, fun, colour, and loads of Caribbean flavours and music. It's going to be a great day. Come down uh, and enjoy it. Uh, last thing, guys, can I just ask you to sign the desk, please? Uh, each, put your monikers. Only one more signature will go on this desk, then it'll be, uh, I think it's got a Jamie Jones Buchanan's this year. Don't forget our YouTube channel, Rugby AM TV. Uh, give us a subscribe link, 10,000 subscribers now. And uh, if you want to win anything like the Great Britain shirt, jump online to rugbym.co.uk. We'll see you next week right here on Free Sports. Good night. God bless.